I'm going to take you on a little journey with me through my thrift store find. I went to the local Goodwill, which I do weekly, probably multiple times a week, more often than I should. And I found this beautiful buffet and it was only 30 bucks. Which if you've been to the Goodwill lately, you know that they have jacked up their prices. So I quickly peeled off that tag, which means I claimed that piece as mine and gave it a quick inspection. Other than some missing trim, all the drawers opened easily and I knew that I could bring this beauty back to life. This is actually a clip from my stories on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should because this is where I take you on my thrifting journeys in real life time and we pick pieces together. So obviously I was not leaving this beauty behind. I got them to load it up into the mom mobile, bring it home and get to work. You can see the big scratches and gouges and the missing trim. Don't worry, we are going to fix all of this. Stay tuned so you can see the end result. This video is not very long, but I'm gonna take you along on every step of the way. I peeled off that broken veneer from the front piece and was left with some little nails that were sticking out. You can hammer them in, but I just find it easier to remove them, peel off that missing veneer, sand it a little bit, and fill in any holes with Dixie Bell's mud. I removed that broken pediment that was on the front of the drawer and did the same thing. Pulled out all the little nails and listen, don't come at me for working my bare feet. It is the way that I am happiest. So you will see bare feet on all of my videos. Who knows? Maybe it'll bring me in some more views. So for the front of this drawer, I just filled in all of the holes and kind of the raised areas with mud knowing that when this does dry i can sand it back to completely flat and you'll have no idea it was there don't worry i have a plan with a beautiful piece of wood you bend that will fit exactly in that spot well that mud was drying i came in with my white lightning white lightning is perfect for cleaning all of your projects i clean inside and out tops bottoms backs fronts the whole entire thing is going to get cleaned with white lightning so to keep things simple i like to use gel stain on a lot of my projects the top of this piece was really not in bad condition so i took my no paint gel stain in colonial black and i applied one even coat that's all it took to cover that kind of orangey red wood gel stain is super simple to use wear a glove and apply it with an applicator pad a nice smooth motion from kind of left to right or whatever way your wood grain goes you will see beautiful coverage any stains are covered any marks are covered and it always looks like a million bucks I decided that I wanted to do the same finish to the front two feet. You can see that they're a little bit more decorative than the back ones. So I just came in after a good clean and wiped them down with that Colonial Black gel stain. Uh, if you'd like to use a foam roller to kind of get it into the crevices or a little foam brush, you can totally do that. But I just wiped on one even coat of Colonial Black No Pain Gel Stain. I know I'm gonna be painting the base, so I really didn't care if I got any gel stain up onto the base of the piece. I can easily paint over top of it. Be prepared to know that since this is an oil-based product, sometimes gel stain takes up to 72 hours to kind of cure and harden. When it does harden, you can seal it with any of the clear coats. My choice is usually Gator Hide to cover up any gel stain. I also really like how the feet then match the top. It really pulls together the look of a piece. I also filled the holes on the front doors of the buffet and some big gouges to then sand down to flat so I can install some new hardware. You can find Would You Bend exclusive content under tools on the Dixie Bell paint page. They carry a line that you can't get anywhere else. I chose two Would You Bend moldings to apply to this piece. So Would You Bend moldings. People don't really use them as much as they should. I'm telling you, I put them on everything. They are such a handy tool to cover up damages. I use them probably more often than anything else in my toolbox. They arrive to you rigid and hard. So what you need to do is heat up the back with either a heat gun or a hair dryer, and then that makes them bendable and malleable. You can see the front of this buffet is actually like a curved surface. So if you were to be using regular wood products, you probably couldn't get it to sit flat. This is why Would You Bend takes the cake for all of my projects. 
So after it is nice and warm and bendy, you can then come in and add your wood glue. It's always recommended to use wood glue with Would You Bend moldings because they are actually made from like a wood slurry into a mold and shape. So come in after you've heated it up efficiently and put that wood glue on the back and you can then just place it on, tape it, clamp it, however you get it to hold onto your surface. And then as soon as your Would You Bend molding is actually on your piece, you're good to go. You can start painting, you can stain it, you can drill holes in it. Whatever you can do to regular wood, you can totally do to a Would You Bend molding. So after I applied my glue, you'll see me kind of mix it around with my finger, making sure I got it onto all of the edges. But I didn't do the bottom part of the Would You Bend where there is a slight overhang, just the top. I then put it onto my piece, kind of bent it and held it for a quick minute, put clamps on there to hold it tight, and then once it gets cold, that shape will be held to the piece. You can also use masking tape to hold it up if that helps. I could use another set of hands. Who wants to come over? It's then recommended to heat up that Would You Bend one more time when it's on your piece. This just ensures that it's super flat to the piece and helps the glue kind of stick on. So don't forget that step. Heat up your Would You Bend after application. While I was waiting for that to dry, I sanded back the hardware holes where I'd filled with mud and got ready for painting my piece. This is actually gonna be a very simple finish today. Beginner friendly, anybody can do this. All right, we are ready for paint. Let's get into it. I chose a classic French linen because this buffet is actually really big and I want it to sell fast. I mean, I love pinks and purples as much as the next colorful girl, but we would like to get this sold and out of my booth space fairly quickly. So I did two even coats of French linen on the buffet. You can use a spray misting bottle filled with water to help kind of water down that chalk mineral paint. This is going to help you too, getting in all the little grooves around your added Would You Bend moldings. Now that my gel stain has dried, I sealed it with Gator Hide and then I sealed the entire base with a clear coat. After that clear coat has dried, I am going to deepen and darken the color with the brand new formula from Dixie Belle, the Dixie Belle Black Glaze. I'm going to apply my black glaze with a paintbrush. Then I'm gonna come in with a damp paper towel and kind of wipe it back. I like to work in small sections so the glaze doesn't dry too quickly. This is gonna give my piece the effect of a black wax, but it's actually all just black glaze. I put the original hardware back onto the top drawers and then I added some beautiful new drop pulls from Undead Hardware. They are gorgeous and complement the piece very well. And that is all I have to say about that. What do you think of my $30 buffet from the Goodwill? She is looking kind of high end and a lot more than $30 now. Thanks for watching.